Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you for joining me. Today we're gonna to take a look at a band project from Genesis keyboardist, Tony Banks. It's called Bank Statement, and I always really liked the way that he worked his uh, last name into the title of the band, and you can see it right there at the top, Banks, and then of course, Bank Statement, so it works like that. Um, and we'll get into that in just a little bit, but if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also, leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music. Just like this, today we're gonna to talk about the side project of Tony Banks, Bank Statement. And so, you know, obviously Tony Banks comes from Genesis. I think most people know that, but uh, the band itself formed in 1967 with their first album, their debut album coming out in 1969. And I don't think most people realize that the band Genesis goes back now 54 years. And, um, you know, while their tenure with Peter Gabriel as the front man in the 70s, of course, took them to amazing heights in terms of prog rock, the late 70s and early 80s with frontman Phil Collins singing for them uh, really took the band into, you know, meteoric heights at that point. And I think at that point, their 1986 album, Invisible Touch, which was their 13th studio album at the time, that's the one that really made Genesis a household name. And it's by far their best-selling album too. In the United States alone, it sold over six million copies. But following the tour for Invisible Touch, each of the band members went back to their respective solo careers. And so, um, you know, you had, at this point, you know, Tony Banks had done two solo albums. He had done some soundtrack work as well, but he had seen the success that Mike Rutherford, the guitar player in Genesis, had had with his side project, Mike and the Mechanics. And so he decided to put together a band project too, this one with a more pop-friendly sound. And so that's where Bank Statement comes into play. And this one here uh, is actually Tony's third solo album but the first one under a band name. And so we've got Tony Banks on keyboards. He also handles some um, synth bass on here, but he also does lead vocals on one of the tracks. And then we've got Steve Hillage coming from the band Gong. He handles guitar, but he also does production for the album. And then there's two additional lead vocalists, one male, one female. And we've got Alistair Gordon on lead vocals and Janie Klimek on lead vocals as well. And so this album here, I think, has really well-crafted late 80s mainstream pop, you know, sounding songs to it. And of course, not unsurprisingly, since the band project itself was based on Mike and, the Me Mike and the Mechanics, I hear a lot of that in here, some real similarities to that. But there's plenty on this album here that I think could have easily been forged into new Genesis material. So I think if you're a fan of Genesis, I think you're gonna really enjoy this as well. Now, one of the things I found unique about this was the use of the three lead vocalists on here and the fact that they've got a male and female. I think that brings a nice touch to this album. And I especially enjoy the tracks where both male and female vocalists are singing on it and that interplay that they do. The tracks on here, um, you know, the opening track on here, track number one, Throwback, that one was a minor hit from them. And I think probably the, the biggest track that most people are gonna remember, it's got this really great over the top horn section to it. And uh, again, probably the thing that if you hear, you're probably gonna remember and say, oh, I remember that one on the radio, even if you didn't know that it was from Bank Statement or Tony Banks doing it. Track three, uh, Queen of Darkness, that one happens to be my favorite track on here and it's probably the most rocking song. It's got a really great groove and it's also got the best keyboard riff on here from Tony in my opinion. And it's got really excellent vocal delivery from uh, Janie Klimek on here as well. Track five, Rain Clouds is another one that I like. This one here has got a real similar sound to the Genesis song, Follow You, Follow Me. It's why I mentioned that uh, this album here I think has a lot of uh, material on it on here that could have been crafted into Genesis material. So again, 
if you're a fan of Genesis, I do uh, think it'd be worth checking this out. And track eight, uh, A House Needs a Roof is another one that I liked. It's a, what I think is just a really perfect slice of 80s pop music here. And it's got a little bit of a new wave flavor to it. I think if the song had actually come out a couple years earlier, because remember this came out in 1989, but if this had come out maybe 1986 or so, I think this one here could have been a real hit for them. So let's take a look at the album. This is the album cover, and I mentioned uh, the use of his last name in this, and so you get bank statement there, and I love the album cover itself using uh, bank statement type paper on it. And there's the back side of it. We get uh, Tony Banks in the middle and the two lead vocalists on either side, and of course track listing running down there. So when we open this thing up, you can see there, this is still the original Atlantic Records version of this, and I was able to pick it up off of Amazon. So it's still in print by Atlantic Records, which I find really interesting. There's a better shot of the cover. Now, unfortunately, there's no additional photos on the inside, but I do like the way that they do the lyrics in here, rolled out on bank paper like that. Just a little different than your standard white booklet uh, with, uh, you know, lyrics printed the way that they would be you know plain and simple so you get a little something extra there but uh, unfortunately no extra photos and i'd love to see this album reissued and get a write-up and stuff like that but so far not so uh you know unfortunately this album didn't scale the heights that i think everyone was hoping it would uh similar in style with uh, mike and the mechanics and phil collins this album did not do that so unfortunately, it is the one and only album that uh, Bank Statement did. And of course, following this, Genesis would get back together and continue on in 1991. Interestingly, in 2010, Tony Banks was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as part of Genesis, so a nice accomplishment there. And this album here, now 32 years on, I find it really interesting that it's still in print on Atlantic Records, a major label, the label that it came out on. So, you know, while most of Tony's solo albums are out of print, this one here still being in print must have done something right at the time, and it must actually continue to sell in some way. So really great that it's still in print. You can pick it up easily. You don't have to pay an arm and a leg off of eBay or anything like that. And again, if you're a Genesis fan and or a Tony Banks solo fan, I highly recommend checking out this album. So do yourself a favor, look it up, give it a chance. I think it's some really good stuff. Also, if you're a fan of Mike and the Mechanics, it's very much along those lines and worth checking out. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. I hope everyone has a great day and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye, everyone.